What's up guys, so today I'm going to be showing you the basics of Red Giant's Tsunami. It's a nice plugin from Red Giant, you can purchase it from the website, it's a really nice plugin. Creates some really nice water effects that may be quite hard and quite render worthy in 3D applications. So we're going to start with making a new composition. I'm just going to make it 15 seconds because I'm not going to render it out, I'm just going to be showing you, you know, different effects you can add on the plugin. And once you've done your new composition, you need to make a new solid. Now you can make this any colour you like, it doesn't make any difference to the plugin at all. And then you want to go to Effect, uh, Red Giant Tsunami, and then Tsunami. Let me turn this down to third, so you can see quickly. Um, so basically this is what you get faced with when you first click on the plugin. Quite an unrealistic looking water. And if you want to change this, you just need to go to Render Options and change your Render Mode to Too Realistic RTM. And once you've clicked on this, you get this more realistic lighting and the water looks a lot more real as well, which I think looks really nice. Um, one thing I want to quickly show you is the oh, another option on the Render Mode. If you click on Wireframe, you see you'll get these little... Um, you get these little like squares on the horizon now when you adjust your tilt which I'll be showing you in a minute you can actually motion track these little squares so if you want to add in a sky replacement or 3D uh, like a ship or something you can um, apply it to this layer and keep it tracked so it will look quite real um, there's a link in the description I'll put it in now of someone that used the horizon uh, tracking to create a really nice video with this plugin, which I think looks really good. Uh, one of the main reasons I went out and got this plugin. Uh, okay, so let's change this back to too realistic. Let's just go through some of the options you can choose. Uh, on your camera, you can choose the field of view, how close you are to the water, how far you are, how far away you are from the water. I think it looks nicer when you're a bit closer. I think I think that was quite good. So obviously you get a nice, kind of f more fuller C image. Uh, you can change your elevation, how high, how low. That's a really nice effect. So obviously you can be right down on the water there, right next to the water, or you can change it to be quite high up. put it back to about 20. I think that's a really nice effect. Um, you've got these as well, you've got roll which adjusts your angle. So say if you wanted to add it to some crazy scene where you're like I don't know, a boat or something, you could add that into the background. Just change it back to zero. You've got your pan and that adjusts, you know, where the like C is that back on the So if you want to play around with the sunset to make it look like you're panning it, all you got to do is drag this top, this uh, drag this angle about. The default is 90. So uh, that's one of the options you can do. And you've got your light options here. Your viewed intensity, you can change the size of the sun. I think it's a nice feature. And you've got your light elevation. Now I normally use about 86. Where the sun comes right down and gives this really nice sunset. Let me put that on full for you guys to see. Hopefully this won't take too long to render out in the preview. So yeah, you get this really, really nice effect here with the sunset. Just quickly put that back onto third. And as I adjust the viewed intensity, it should change the size of the sun. I'm hoping it will. Oh no, viewed size, sorry. It should change the size of the sun. There you go, so you can have this really nice sun there on the horizon. Like that. Which looks really good. And obviously then you can change your light intensity to how bright you want it. And how dark you want it, or whatever. I think looks really good. Just 
put that back to how it was. So that's pretty much it really for the plug-in. I mean, just make sure that you're on too realistic if you want a really realistic and strong looking C. You can play around with the sun. I mean, it's it's mainly just about playing around with what you like and what you think looks good and how, of course, it will fit your uh, the video you're rendering. Um, if you'd like me to do another video, a uh, more in-depth video, maybe placing objects onto the water or something like that, then feel free to comment in the section below and I'll um, show you. Much like the uh, castle when I placed it above the water, I'll show you how to do stuff like that if you really want. It's just simple masking and um, stuff like that. So I'm still yet to do the realistic texturing tutorial and I'm also still yet to do my matte painting tutorial. The reason being that I'm being late on those is that they're both very in-depth tutorials and I'm having quite a few render issues with when rendering them out. <coughs> I should be getting a new microphone soon, I'm going to be getting the blue Yeti which should be really nice for these tutorials, hopefully be a bit more easier for you to hear me, a lot cleaner as well. So um, yeah, I'll see you guys later, cheers for watching, comment, subscribe, favourite this video as well, it helps me get you know, a lot more notice, more like, yeah. So <laughs> yeah, um, stay tuned for the next tutorial, it will be on either map painting or um, the castle textures in Cinema 4D, that realistic texturing you really want to find out how to do. And I'll uh, see you later, I suppose. Yeah.